Hi, it's Hazel. Welcome back to my channel. I think that perhaps you've got a lot of book pages. Check. I think that perhaps you have a lot of embroidery thread. Check. So today's video is about combining the two into some interesting ephemera that basically has that handmade look to it. So on this one, basically, well, I guess I kind of made a, I don't know, error in judgment. This is really old paper. This has doubled up and it's still very thin. As I stitched these spruce trees, I was having trouble with um, holes being made, like the paper tearing. So what I did for some of the other projects was pick paper that is slightly more resilient. Uh, I can almost... That's 18 something. So, um, yeah, nice paper, but not particularly a good choice for this. So, so basically, I just used some shades of green to give it a little more interest, a little more depth. And then I didn't want them floating on the page. So, I kind of made it look like there's a hill and some terrain there. So, that is, you know, other than maybe adding something in a final stage I would call that one done this one is newer paper and again I've doubled it up and I like the idea off the um of the two of these decorative borders and this fancy little stuff here so uh what I did on this one is I made, I measured, <laughs> I know some that's a bad word for some of you, but I measured and I made a really faint line. So, well, actually three lines, just because I didn't want to go, have it go uphill or downhill or whatever, as it is because of the stitch that I'm doing, which is basically just a running stitch. Uh, you can tell that it was hand done not machine made so I don't need it to go you know again cockeyed to convince anybody it was homemade and that would irk the heck out of me so so basically what I did is I I started a wee bit in from the edge number one didn't want to tear the paper although this is a heck of a lot more sturdy um, than this one so fewer problems so basically what I did was I started okay here's where I started with this knot and then just stitched across following the line as well as I could so then that looked uh, you know kind of skimpy so then I decided that I would retrace my steps and fill in those gaps on the way back so I saved um, the rest of this row to do with you. Oh, I should say that this is the type of needle I'm using. It's fairly, should have gotten the glue off my fingers. That's the danger when you're doing umpteen videos in one day. Um, I have paint on me. I have glue on me. I probably have ink on me. Anyway, this is the needle. It's blunt. And it's got a big eye. Now, if I'm not mistaken, what am I using three threads here? Uh, if you have embroidery thread, you probably know that embroidery thread comes in six strands. This is three strands. Now for this one, because I wanted it to be thicker and to have better coverage, I used six strands. And of course you can choose, whoa, what did I do? Can I go back this way without having to re-thread my needle? Yes. 
lucky break. Sometimes that's dangerous because you split the thread and then you have um, a different, <laughs> you have a new problem. So basically, I'm just, like I said, filling in the gaps here. Um, I won't need to erase my little line and, you know, it wouldn't matter even if, if, uh, if it was visible, but it will be covered. Why oh, can't hang on to this needle? Maybe I need to take a break. Um, so yeah, I'm just filling in the stitching. Now this is, you know, kind of, this is sort of the, the color of baby poop. I don't know, kind of. I think that is the official name, baby poop. Um, I just thought it would look kind of good with the decorative, the black, the creamy. But again, it depends on uh, what you like, the project you might be creating this for, and um, what threads you have, and your color preference. Now, uh, okay, this one is... Four inches tall, three and a half wide. This one is just over f uh, five and a quarter. It just it's five and a quarter inches, so it would be a good size for a pocket. The I have one more idea to show you, and that one I should have actually probably looked in a book, but I was just trying to. Rely on memory and whatever. So I think that's kind of cool. Now, of course, when the time comes, a person could uh, decorate it further. So basically what I want to do here is run my needle under that thread, that last stitch. And maybe again in the same place, make a loop, run that through there tie a knot and I'll probably do maybe I'll do one more just in the next stitch just for the heck of it again you know this is probably it's not going to go anywhere um, I guess if I really wanted additional assurance I could put a dab of glue but I'm not going to Okay, so let's put that aside. And again, those those tiny little knots aren't going to create any kind of a problem for you. Oh, it would be good if it was in screen. Um, okay, so that's that. Now with this one, again, I've doubled up the paper. And I, this is my, <laughs> I call this the blanket stitch. And I don't know if that's the real name or what. I just, I hope now that it's time to show you that I remember what I was doing. Um, the reason my thread may look a little bit funny is I accidentally, when I had to um, start, like I had to, I ran out because of course it uses a lot of thread. I accidentally uh, split it into three strands, but that wasn't right. It was supposed to be six strands, so I, whoops, I uh, doubled them up. But very soon, I'm going to be out of thread again. So basically, I'm making a hole, you know, relatively close to the last one. Again, because it's a blunt needle, it's not that easy. It doesn't always go where you want it to. And then as I'm about to, to uh, I then run the needle through that, make a little loop there, just so that um, I have that kind of thing that protects the edge. And then you sort of tighten it. Again, this isn't the neatest looking thing in the world. What the heck did I do? 
I'm going to do a couple more and then I'm going to quit because I'm going to have to. So the needle is coming through. I just work it through that little loop there and it makes a design on the, and it, it closes in and covers the top edge. So, it, you know, this is pretty rigid. Uh, if it was weak, this would be a good way to strengthen the edge of a, a pocket print. So this is four inches, four inches wide, four inches tall. Now, if that turns out to be too tall for a pocket, then certainly a person would could trim down the bottom. Again, a little, oh boy. You know what, I don't think I can do that one. I'm not gonna have enough to finish the stitch and have anything decent to, to um, tie, tie it off with. So I'm just going to run this under a few stitches. Again, I'm not, I know I'm not winning any points for for neatness or technique here so much but I did want to show you this this stitch maybe I'll go under a couple I almost don't have enough to go through here and tie a knot but if I back through I can you can see that where I joined here looking a little suspect but again, I don't imagine that anybody's going to be examining my stitching that carefully. So I have to say that this idea is not mine. Uh, the very first time I saw it was probably two and a half years ago. And it was Pam at the paper outpost that was, um, that came up with the idea. I don't remember what she did in the way of stitching. I know that I I did a couple of pieces at the time. I'm not sure where they are. Uh, I know I did try blanket stitch, and I think I did maybe a spruce tree before too. So this is this one is different. Um, so again, more of the same thread, and I would just oh. See, when they're pre-cut like this, it probably means that I salvaged them from a stitchery kit. I did a lot of petty point in my day. And, you know, those uh, Louise Gregoire and Alice Godkin kits. So it was crazy. I was doing that, I remember, as a newlywed. And... Maybe you have to have sort of an addictive personality or something. But I remember staying up way, way, way too late thinking, oh, I'll just finish this thread. Oh, I'll just finish this petal. Oh, I'll just finish this color. And of course, that stuff, those kinds of kits are so labor intensive. I don't know if anyone has ever clocked their hours doing it, but... Like, it's absolutely insane how many hours it takes. And I found that I couldn't quit, which is, you know, see, there's something wrong here. But we're not going to look at it that carefully. I wonder if I can restart this and finish this row at least, finish these next few stitches. See, this is where it would have been good to... I think I, I'm going to go in here and see if that will be a good start for me. That's probably what I did over there and it looks kind of weird. Okay, don't do that. Whatever you do, don't do that. Or maybe it'll be fine once I do the next one because it is sort of 
Oh, I've got that gap there. I'm just going to pull those threads over a bit. Anyway, okay, we're going to pretend that that never happened. I know that I, I realize that I say that fairly often. Okay, let's pretend that never happened. Um, I just want to reassure you that I, I truly <laughs> do not live in denial. Um, I guess what I'm trying, I'm, I'm a face the facts kind of person. But I guess um, when I do it in the context of this crafting or these videos, the, the point I'm trying to make is everything is fixable. So if uh, something has gone wrong or you're not totally happy with what you've just done, oh, see, I don't like that big gap there, so I'm going to squeeze another. Boy, that's going to probably be wrong. But... This loosey-goosey attitude that I may be portraying here is not really who I am, but I think it makes a lot of sense in the context of this, um, this crafting, especially for junk journals and that. Like if, if I was doing a blanket stitch around the edge of a, um, a blanket, for instance, can I tell you an interest? Well, I don't know how interesting, but can I tell you a story? Um, when my daughter lived at home and she was, I don't know, maybe grade seven or something, she had a crush on one of the Oilers players. A guy who ended up being, what did I do here? Kind of ended up being, by the time he got traded, he was really quite unpopular with the with uh, the viewing public and so on anyway i don't know why she took a liking to him but it was a um you know he he wasn't the most handsome guy on the team he wasn't whatever she she has a lot of food allergies like the deadly anaphylactic shock type well and so did this guy so one of the hospitals in Edmonton put on, um, you know, a Saturday thing for allergy sufferers. And he was the guest, um, you know, because he too had life threatening, um, allergies. So he was kind of, I don't remember the content of what, I don't even know if I was present in the room. It might've just been for teens. <clears throat> Anyway, of course, we had to drive in so she could hear her hero talk about food allergies. Anyway, so she loved him. And it was one of those things where, you know, once your male classmates find out about something like that, of course, that makes it your fair game then for all the teasing that goes with it. Anyway, one of the things that she did was she got me to... Okay, the Oilers colors are, uh, well, I mean, they've had a few iterations. Blue and orange, but then for a while there, it was blue and copper. <clears throat> so this was during the blue and copper days. So she gets me to buy this fleece to make a blanket. And, of course, then the thread. What am I doing wrong here? trying to walk and chew gum. Did I miss? Yes, I did. Um, so then some copper thread. And do you think that she didn't do a blanket stitch all around that damn blanket? And, um, you know, basically I would say bigger than a lap, blanket but you know not like a double bed or anything like that so somewhere in between but still a lot of mileage uh to go around with a stitch like this that you're hand doing but she did it and then she embroidered his i think his hockey number or something in the corner so 
we were at a game. This blanket is finally finished. You think we're not huddling out in the in the parking lot. Um, back, well, it's winter, of course, because it's hockey season. Freezing our butts off in the cold because we're waiting for this guy to come out of the building and uh, get on a bus because I think they were going to fly out to some place for their next game. So she did manage to see him and did manage to give it to him. Now I have no idea what these what these guys have gotten over the years, what they oh <laughs> oh my god. Look at this lovely thing I just made. Anyway, to make a long story short, she gave it to him and, uh, you know, sometime later he was traded and so on. And I think every now and then somebody still reminds her about her crush on this guy. He hasn't played hockey for years now. Anyway, um, so doing a little four inch thing doesn't seem like such a big deal when I know somebody who did a whole blanket. That was the point of that long winded story. It maybe also speaks to a more innocent time. Um, I might have to glue these knots down so they don't keep, <coughs> excuse me, so they don't keep, um, you know, sort of poking out. I don't know what things <laughs> this is going to be worth, but anyway, okay, let this be a lesson to you. Do a running stitch. Do any other slow stitch that you might want. Oh, um. Uh, Okay, did I tie enough knots here? I think I did. I'll do one more just for the heck of it. Maybe I can do a French knot. I guess the point of this is that if you get too close, you are in essence perforating the paper. Oh, uh, is this gonna be enough thread? Let's try. Let us try. Whoops. That probably was an indication that I shouldn't try. I have enough thread. Why am I skimping? Um, yeah, I, I suspect that if any young girl is trying to show her love and admiration for a hockey player these days, it probably is more likely to involve underwear than than uh, a hand-stitched blanket. <laughs> Just guessing. I have no way of knowing. Anyway, in case... Uh, I think I just showed this the other day. Don't remember why, but anyway. Um, this is apparently called a quilter's knot. I didn't know about it till just recently, or in the last year or so. It is the cat's meow, so... Lay your uh, needle down alongside the thread. Wrap it around two or three times. Slide the needle through, holding, you know, all of that kind of between your thumb and your finger. And you end up with a nice knot very close to the end. And it's, it's like, it's like the best thing since sliced bread. Okay, since we are okay, let's we might as well have this right set up. So made the knot poking through a, a French knot, of course, has several wraps of thread around it. You're trying to keep the tension on, and I'm just going to try to poke this beside it. Oh, 
that maybe was not a good idea. That didn't work because it just made a bigger hole. Now, I suppose why don't I just put a piece of scotch tape okay, this is the right side I'm going to put a small I don't need a, such a big piece a piece of scotch tape over there, reinforce that hole and let's try this again I can't get the tape off my fingers. Okay. So. Come through. Do several wraps. And this is the full six strands so it'll be a fairly and this time i'm going to maybe go a little further away from the original hole i'm going to gingerly pull that through i don't know why i've got this loop here Why did that happen? Well, I hope you're not taking your stitching advice from me. I have to try to get this done because now, you know, my pride is on the line here. Okay. Got a new knot. And I'm going to move away from that area. But still in an area that has been taped poking my hole. Whoops. One, two, three, four. I'm going to put it through the same hole and hope That it doesn't just enlarge the hole, but it in fact leaves the uh, leaves the bulk of the. We're either going to have something very beautiful, or it's going to disappear. Let me straighten this out. Not too shabby. Now, a few more wraps might have made that bigger, but you saw me have difficulty before that, so why don't I do a bit more taping, preemptive taping. And that way, you know, because what is one French knot by itself? Nothing. Let me get rid of this a little bit. Okay, let's do that again.
you know, you probably want at least a, a cluster of three or five or seven. Okay, I did, what did I do? Four wraps? One, two, three, four. Let's try five just for the heck of it. Back through the same hole. This does give the paper a workout. Not to mention, <sighs> come back here, you. Why, oh why? What the heck? <laughs> Even my first one has disappeared. Too close? Is that it there? Oh my goodness. Okay, so maybe French knots aren't that great an idea. Even with a tape reinforcement. So, I'll try something else. And maybe it's just foolhardy. Oh. To try doing this with paper. It is way more fragile than cloth. And of course, that I had to um, go a little bit beyond and not try to reuse the same hole. So same thing here. I'm not going to I shouldn't press my luck here. If this flower ends up with five petals, I'll be lucky. Oh. I guess it would be better if the petals were sort of the same size. But hey, we can't have everything, can we? I am going in through the same hole and I'm making these petals bigger than I would have if they were, uh, if, the, if I was using cloth, simply because I don't want to, then I don't have to bend the paper as much. This is gonna be quite a big flower. thread. Okay, let me I probably only have enough thread for five petals. Ooh, that's going to be a big one. And I'm probably pre uh, pressing my luck here by being that. Like yanking on it that much. OK, 
Okay, so what size is this petal going to be? Clearly, I don't have two that are the same size. Am I going through one of those holes? I better not. Pull this in a bit, and I wonder. Yeah, I guess most of that is on the is where I've taped. I guess I'm going to have to do a sixth petal just because I got that big gap there. Or do I have, maybe I have to do it over here. Because there I don't have that much. Oh, maybe we'll see. Maybe this will end up with seven petals. Not going to go as big as the one beside it. And I'm going, I'm making a new hole for that little anchoring thread. So I'm going to fill this gap here, hopefully. Again, trying not to make too many perforations because exhibit A. <laughs> You can see that um, that this you go through a fair bit of thread. So, if you have as much thread as I do, this is actually kind of uh, a good way to get rid of some of it. Okay, that's looking better. I'm going to make it work to do one more in between here. I'm going to go in. A little higher. And then, whoops, and then hopefully I still have enough to tie it off. Oh, yeah. No. It's too bad I didn't move over a bit because I've got these holes here. I'm pretty happy with that. See what happens if you never say die? It does get a bit bulky. And perhaps if I do another, if I do this again, I would maybe look for a slightly finer needle and probably use two or three strands as opposed to six. Of course, if it's less thread, you, need, you can get away with a needle with a smaller eye. Another needle here. Oops. Yeah, smaller needle. Well, that one's more pointed. I mean, smaller eye. Yeah, that would... Mind you, they feel like they're the same diameter, so I don't know what I would gain there, other than maybe piercing the paper a bit more easily, which is not necessarily a desirable thing. This one is even bigger longer, thicker, and a bigger eye, so I wouldn't be using that one. Anyway, kids, that is what I have to say for today. I am really kind of disappointed in how this went, but I will 
give it a little dab, or maybe fabric tack would be better. Try to tuck those, get those knots to behave themselves and stay at the back so that, um, you know, I can glue that down or who knows what, or maybe just pretend it never happened. I'm just trying to neaten some of this up here by making these guys go to the back. I should put a little blob there for that knot. Okay, we've got another unruly thing happening over here. I'm considering that I have several books with embroidery, um, like how-to diagrams. I shouldn't have wasted all that time and thread inventing something that clearly is, <laughs> isn't that attractive to look at. And again, the lesson there was don't perforate your, your, uh... okay, we can pretend that I wanted it to be like this. I should put a wee bit of glue here just so this last stitch doesn't fall off the end. Actually, it would have been better to do it from this side. Just pushing that th last thread back a bit so that I can put a dollop of glue there. This was me trying to get going here, not knowing what the heck I was doing. Okay, enough of that. Okay, guys, thank you for joining me, and we will see you tomorrow, tomorrow, tomorrow. Okay, thanks. Bye-bye.